Hey everyone, Hi. welcome to this week's Connect Group Bible Study. We're going to be looking at the passages that we, well, I spoke on on Sunday. <laughs> He's I forgotten get, already. I get thrown because uh, we record it earlier in the week, and so I don't know where I am in the week, and, and there's, there's no seasons. seasons, so it's like, nah. Anyway, so I don't know where <laughs> I am, but we're going to look at Romans 8, and we're going to look at John chapter 8. In parallel. And uh, we'll, we'll shift things around a bit. I'm just going to explain one idea, and then we're going to look at our main reading. So... Romans chapter 8, this amazing promise, and Paul puts it here because he's about to explain what life in the Spirit is like. Life uh, led by the Spirit, filled by the Spirit, empowered by the Spirit, everything we're going to celebrate afresh next week at Pentecost Sunday. Um, It's my favourite time of year. Be expectant. But he knows that you're going to struggle to receive that (laughs) if you don't don't accept, accept this. Yeah, this is key. So let's have a look at it. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. How does that work? For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. And one of uh, a brilliant illustration that a friend of mine used said, look, when you get in a plane, it's not that the law of gra- like the law of gravity is working on us now. We're we're on the ground, I'm not or floating. on the floor because of the law of gravity. Now, when you get in a plane and you fly, it's not that the law of gravity stops acting on you. It's that a greater law is now at work on you: the law of aerodynamics. And mm. the aerodynamic force is greater than the gravitational force, which means you can go on holiday in Langkawi. Like you, you get your plane Yay. flies and you travel, and. Um, <laughs> Thing is, we get caught up in all this stuff, and it's the it's not that the, the temptation that sin no longer has a pull on your life. It's that a greater force is now at work in your life. This law of the spirit of life, I love that. and um, you know, sometimes we look at some people and think, well, of course, you know, Mars and Sarah, of course, the spirit loves to use them because you know they're great. They're they're so aerody- aerodynamic, like a fighter <laughs> jet. But I'm like this beluga Airbus kind beluga. of plane. Like you'd never think that that would fly but it does because the maths that is a weird plane i know and it flies because the maths adds up it doesn't matter what you look like uh i mean the analogy does break down eventually but (laughs) but but the maths adds up and so you fly now uh, the other bit of this analogy that i love is that nobody actually knows why planes stay in the air like there are two ideas of why aerodynamics works um but they still don't know scientists can't fully explain it in its fullness but yet we all still get in a plane and we all go and travel so yeah so um and you could view the cross of that we don't fully understand exactly how it works but we see that it does work and so we can receive it um for ourselves Uh, and one of the most beautiful illustrations of this is found in john chapter 8 the story of the woman caught in adultery or as we see maybe it'd be better titled the story of the men caught with rocks in their hands yes that would be a better title yeah it would be maybe so um let's we're going to start at uh at the beginning of romans 8 which uh john chapter 8 which for some reason starts at verse 53 the beginning haven't got time to go into that now uh but kate why don't you read it to us let's go oh and as per usual oh yeah question mark for any questions exclamation mark for anything that stands out to you and an arrow for anything that you think oh i can apply that to my life anyway let's go so we're john chapter eight but starting at verse 53 the one before then they all went home but jesus went to the mount of olives At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. Can you hear our girls uh, singing in the background? In the law of Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. Now, what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. I would love to know what he wrote. I'm sure we can imagine. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who had heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left, with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. 
neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. Amen. So one of the key ideas that this passage uh, teaches us is that condemnation is like a boomerang. You throw it in one direction, but it always goes in another. And there's it's basically like a, a great theme on YouTube. I won't uh, distract you now, but of people kicking footballs and it landing back in their face. And you can spend a lot of time uh, on that. But basically, condemnation, when you throw it at other people, eventually comes back and hits you. But also when you throw it at yourself, it eventually starts hitting other people as well Mm. and uh, and the the line that i use for this is this story says to us drop the rock the rock you've got in your hand that you want to throw at others drop it the rock you want to throw at god drop it Mm. and the one you want to throw at yourself drop that as well and which can um, be hard we're not which can be really hard and we're gonna we're gonna look at a bit how that works so let's look at the first bit so jesus uh is they're they're trying to catch him out uh the the religious leaders and they're trying to catch him out because they think he's going to take away their power they think we've got power he's going to take it jesus is a spoil sports he's going to ruin my life which is probably we can all identify with that so they're trying to catch him out uh, and so that they can accuse him and so the teachers of the law and the pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery now it's really helpful here if you can forget that you know the end of the story if you forget that you know the end there's so much drama it's like Mm -hmm. is the woman going to get convicted is the woman jesus going to be condemned is the leaders going to get condemned and then at the end the leaders are gone the crowd's gone the woman's gone it's just jesus and you and the reader and it's like wow what's jesus saying to me and the whole story is marked with confusion except jesus jesus is just always in control Mm -hmm. so they bring this woman to him to try and catch him out. Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. And there we had to, that's pretty weird. Like, I mean, they've got issues doing this, okay, first of all. Um, what do you mean? And, well, it's just a bit weird. They catch her in the act, not they like read her saucy WhatsApps, but like they catch her. They burst in. They burst in. Well, where's and the dude? They leave the man. He slips off into the crowd, obviously. And, and they bring her and they say, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women and it's like yeah in the law yeah yeah you're right but it also said the men and and augustine has this line art thou angry according to the law that you can be angry in a way that god is not angry and think that you've got the details but you haven't got the heart of the law now what do you say and they're using this question to trap him uh and and they're willing to kill her to prove a point which is pretty horrific that is horrific and jesus bent down and he started to write on the ground with his finger what did he write what well okay write? We, we can guess at that later <laughs> but but the choreography is really interesting here if you can link it to psalm 1 blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners nor sits in the seat of scoffers but whose delight is in the law of the lord and that's all going on here jesus sits down to teach he bends down he straightens up oh, he cool. stoops down and he wrote on the ground and at this those who heard began to go away one at a time the old ones also oh, i've skipped let anyone who's without sin be the first to throw a stone at her again he stooped down and wrote on the ground and the crowd leave now what you see here is that jesus the fascinating thing is first of all he doesn't condemn the woman but neither does he condemn the condemners he convicts them but he doesn't condemn them which is amazing. It's amazing. Like our culture, especially online culture, thrives on condemning people. Mm. And Jesus doesn't condemn the de- condemners. Mm. He, he drops the rock that he could have thrown at the woman and at this crowd. And, and so my first question is, is around this. this. How do we get skilled at conviction? Because condemnation is no longer in our hands. Right? Yeah. So there's this idea that we try and use condemnation as a corrective tool, sometimes against ourselves. But this we're going to look at it as we use it to other people. And it can easy uh, be tempting to use shame, condemnation as a way of changing other people's behavior. But as Christians, that's been taken out of our hands. We don't have that anymore. Because there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That's against you, but also for you to use. So... Like, so how do we get skilled at conviction? Yeah, how do we get skilled at conviction? You know, I, I don't know if you know those people who can challenge you in a way and you don't feel condemned, but suddenly you feel, wow. Free almost, like free, oh. Free from the past and yeah. also, wow, here's a new future. Free to walk into a new future. I, I had a friend, to, a, uh, a mentor who I was meeting and I was late and I kind of was expecting him to be an angry. And when we met up, he just said, well, it's interesting that you're late because you enjoy these chats, you find them helpful. So why is it you... 
why you, do you think you why wouldn't? do you think you forgot uh, and we talked about that and i asked him about this a few years later and he said oh you know it's always more fun to play detective than judge and like being a judge is quite lonely uh, yeah. But being a detective is interesting. And uh, so who do you know? And you bring the best out of people. Yeah, who do you know who's really yourself. skilled at conviction? Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, where have you seen that done well? How do we get better at drawing out the best out of people like Jesus does here? Go for it. Discuss. So the first rock that we drop is the rock that we'd like to throw at other people. Now let's look at the rock that we're tempted to throw at ourselves. So Jesus straightened up and asked the woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No No one, one, sir, she said. (laughs) Neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. And here what we see is the stark contrast that condemnation brings death. They want to stone her, literally. And conviction, conviction brings, brings life. life. Go, mm-hmm. leave your life of sin, uh, uh, and go and go into your new future. Mm. Um, and sometimes I think we th- want to condemn ourselves. Now, why do we do that? I think. Um, why do we do that? Som- we can be our harshest critic. Yeah, some, can't we? sometimes I think we deserve it. But mm. as we've seen, it's beside the point. This woman deserved it, as did the man. But she deserved to be condemned. Uh, but it's beside the point. She is a home wrecker. She's brought death into her life and into her family's life, as has the man again. Um, and Jesus goes into bat to defend her. Mm. So it doesn't matter what you've done. Jesus is your advocate, is your defender. And the reason he does that is because he knows that feeling condemned won't change your behavior. What will change your behavior is knowing that every time you sin, you have an advocate in heaven who says to the Father, don't. Don't worry, I've got this covered. You forgive he's him. cheerleading for you he's to do cheer- better. Yeah, he's cheerleading for you. So we think we deserve it. I think sometimes we think if I condemn myself, other people won't. Oh. I think that's one way. Um, there's a great line, very niche comedy, Blackadder from uh, the BBC. Are you going to play it or read it? No, uh, there's this moment where Baldrick, which is like his stupid sidekick, he's like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm carving something on my bullet. What are you carving? I'm carving Baldrick. Uh, why? It's part of a cunning plan. You know how they say somewhere there's a bullet with your name on it? Yes. Well, I thought if I owned the bullet with a name on it, <laughs> I'll never get hit by it because I'll never shoot myself. Um, and there's that <laughs> sense of like, oh, if I condemn myself, then others won't be able to. Now, the problem with that is what you throw at yourself eventually comes out at others. There's a great line of never speak to yourself in a way that you wouldn't speak to a best friend. Dan says this to me a lot. Yeah, because sometimes <laughs> like people are so harsh on themselves. You're like, if your best friend came to you and just listed what you've listed, you would not be saying you need to buck up your ideas. Did it? You'd be like, go be easy on yourself. yourself. Be kind to yourself. Have a bath, eat some chocolate. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and have a go again tomorrow. Um, and I think the, the, the problem with all of that is that it's this internal dialogue that says God doesn't like me. God mm. has condemned me. And what we see here is Jesus could have thrown the rock but he's dropped the rock that he could have thrown at you. And therefore, you should probably drop the rock that you want to condemn yourself with uh, as well. An even better rule of thumb of not speaking to yourself like you wouldn't speak to a friend is never speak to yourself in a way that Jesus wouldn't speak to you. In Isaiah, we're told a bruised reed he will not break, a smoldering wick he he will not um, uh, snuff out. Yeah, he speaks directly. Conviction can be painful, because, but it's, it's, a, it's like a violence that brings life, like a surgeon's knife. It's, it's not a, a vague cloud of condemnation says you were never any good, you'll never be any good, and you are no good. And it's just all encompassing. Whereas conviction says this is... This specific is, thing. This specific thing is broken, mm-hmm. and this is, is the way out. And Jesus says, I will help you in it. Um, as to what was written in the sand, Miles has a theory... <laughs> Uh, what's he writing we don't know is the main thing but in (laughs) Jeremiah it says um, those who turn away from you shall be written in the dust for they have forsaken the Lord the fountain of living water in the previous chapter in John Jesus has called himself the living water so is he writing the name of the people in the crowd some people would say he's writing the sins 
of the people in the crowd and he's kind of a link to uh, the stone tablets with the Ten Commandments on that were inscribed by the finger of God in stone and he's now putting it in dust as a link to revelation there but we don't really know but he's one thing he, we definitely know is he's not reacting he's responding and he's taking his time uh, and I think that's one of the things here so often condemnation is urgent we need to make a decision now da, da, da. and Jesus just slows the ball he takes his time Slowed he's everything owning down. everything down and, and I think whenever you feel convicted of a sin that's the time to slow things down spend time with Jesus talk to other people about it as well bring other people other voices in because one of the things one of the reasons we need the Holy Spirit as we read the Bible is you can't read Jesus's tone here it, it's like you know woman where are they has no one condemned you or is it woman where are they has no we we don't know the tone just from the text you have to have the holy woman was an affectionate term. yeah it wasn't like well you you can derogatory. look at the greek you can use biblehub.com and look at the text and draw some inferation in inference from it but, we don't know but you need the holy don't. spirit and you need to know that the holy spirit the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness the the holy spirit speaks to you kindly and the key thing again from romans it's the kindness of god that leads us to repentance the kindness of god that leads us to repentance I how David Suchet reads it in Bible in one year. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Very <laughs> poshly, definitely. Very indeed. Anyway, so question two. What are the situations that condemnation comes easily to you? So oh, often, well, yeah, there'll be things that trigger different people. So some people, it's when they fail. Mm. They like, some people, when they fail, it's like, I'm condemned. Other people, when they fail, it's like, ha, oh, fine. Another thing that didn't work. Like, <laughs> oh, da, da, next. next. But uh, disagreement. Some people, the moment they have an argument with somebody, everything is broken. It, it's like, and they can't carry on until that's sorted. Other people, it's a, it's a physical thing, an area of their life, maybe food or Damn. sex. Or... Um, is this, have you just listed the areas in which I do this? Literally when one. I'm hungry, <laughs> when I fail, when we have an argument, I'm like, oh, we need to fix it now. Well, we can talk about that in the gap. Uh, <laughs> no, these are all things that I think I different people... I thought you deliberately done it. It's yeah. like a kind of passive-aggressive, let's talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> There's no condemnation, but there is passive aggression <laughs> in the church. No, <laughs> no, no. 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 Um, and, and then the next question is, how do you respond to condemnation? Uh, some of us have learned and are in different stages of our journey some of us have you know what because when you condemned often you go to the things that bring comfort and give you a sense of control as well and actually that's why jesus doesn't use condemnation because he wants you to come to him um and so uh, just have a chat around those things what are the situations where condemnation easily comes to you and when you feel condemned what are the things that you go to how do you uh, respond Okay, so we, well we've now had that chat where we've resolved all our issues. Um, the last thing just to say here is that uh, I think one of the reasons condemnation does come is that is that people think, well, I still struggle. And there's still, well, we, we're also aware of the consequences. As I said, no condemnation doesn't mean no consequences. If you kick a dog, God will not condemn you, but the dog still may bite you. Mm -hmm. So there are consequences. You know about that. You you nearly kicked a dog. Do you remember? Oh, they yeah. tried to attack me. Tried on to attack me, and I, I, oh, I, I squared up to it, like, and the dog and the just dog got like more aggressive. You. <laughs> I was like, You're like ah. oh, I've escalated too far. But um, <laughs> but basically, there are consequences. He, uh, sometimes in God's grace, He sets us free from that as well. But the consequences doesn't mean that you're condemned. Also, again, we feel the pull of temptation of sin in our lives. That doesn't mean you're condemned. Yet gravity acts on you, but a greater law is at work in your life um, to set you free. And, um, you know, I shared Dan's testimony, uh, who was in my alpha group. And, um, yeah, he, he used to condemn himself every day, got filled with the spirit, was baptized two weeks later, suddenly realized I don't condemn myself anymore. Nothing had changed in him. But he the law acting he internally on him. was speaking to himself yeah. differently. The Amazing. law acting on him had changed. After years and years yeah. of... Nothing in the situation had changed. Nothing in the consequences had changed. But the law acting on him had. And... Um, 
And that's really where we want to finish is to pray for one another. Like uh, the artwork that comes out of this story is just so amazing. Uh, this picture is oh, a really wow. powerful one. And I just, I mean, that is the voice of condemnation, isn't it? Right there. there. That's Monday morning Looks shouting like, me before coffee. Like um, yeah. And, uh, um, and so it can be a really powerful way to pray just to Google some of the artwork and to. Uh, yeah. Have you ever tried praying using images? So fun. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so, so basically what we'd love you to do now is pray uh, that you'd be able to receive this for yourself, that you'd receive that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because next week it's Pentecost. We remind ourselves Woo-hoo! of what God has done. Seriously get expectant, guys. I'm like so excited. Yeah, it's, it's um, going to be an amazing Sunday. Service in the morning, then we can gather to pray in the evening because look at our world. We need to pray. Yeah. And, um, and, and if we can understand this and receive this for ourselves, mm. it unleashes a new power and a and new freedom in our lives. Stop believing those lies, bringing yeah. the freedom. Kate, why don't you pray for us and then we'll let everyone pray yeah. for each other. Lord, thank you so much that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We thank you for the power of that truth. Holy Spirit, fill every person who is listening, watching, zooming in now um, to this time. We ask that you'd fill them and may they know deeply the freedom that you bring it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Lord, we believe that you are going to do a new thing in us and help us to, to grow and, and, yeah, step out in the new freedom that you're inviting us to. We just claim that promise that it's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. Just mm-hmm. receive that afresh, that God is a kind leader. He's a kind judge. He's a kind friend. And it's his kindness that brings about the change that we want. Mm. That he has dropped all the rocks that he could have thrown at us. Mm. And therefore, we can drop them as well. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Carry on praying for each other and see you next week. God bless.